be honest with you, watching either of them at the back, I feel exactly the same so. about you know, about the way they're getting closed down. But this is what they practice in training. Yeah. So answer your question, uh, and it'd be interesting to see what Blues fans think about this as well. Um, my gut feeling is that I think that Chris Davies will probably end up going back yeah. to Bailey Peacock Farrell for the league game. So welcome back to BCFC Royal Blue. Uh, this weekend, Birmingham City lost their unbeaten start to the EFL League One season, going down 1-0 to Charlton Athletic at the Valley. Myself and Matt were at the match and what can only be described as a, uh, a disappointing performance. And we're going to discuss that t- uh, today, um, give our thoughts on the match, uh, sort of try and sort of give our opinion on what we felt uh, went wrong, really. So I'll just hand it straight over to Matt, really, with your thoughts on the match. I think all Blues fans will acknowledge that was a poor performance, weren't it, Dad? Mm-hmm. You know, being there on the coach on the way home just feels that extra bit longer, don't it, when you've lost well, away from back, home. It? Yeah. Um, but it was a poor performance, no point in denying that. Uh, full credit to Charlton, you know, they deserve those three points. Uh, yeah. And, you know, let's just put things into perspective here, though. Fair enough, that was a poor performance, it was a bad game, but we've played nine, we've won seven, we've lost one and drew one. Mm-hmm. A fantastic mm-hmm. start to the season. If you'd have told me that's how we'd have got off to the start of the season, Dad, I'd have snapped your hand off before the, before we got underway. So, just putting into context, you know, it was a bad game, it was a bad defeat, um, but, you know, it's still an amazing start to the season. So, let's not blow this out of context yeah, or blow it absolutely. out of proportion, you know. We're yeah. still having a great start. And, you know, I think... The loss was disappointing. The performance was disappointing. But I think for me, it was more how we lost. Yeah. We were out of character. We weren't doing the things we usually do. And every 50-50 ball there was, they seemed to win it. They seemed to have more bite and a bit more hunger than we did. And that's what disappointed me the most is that we, we stepped away from our game plan. And we said in the pre-match video, Daddy, if we stick to our game plan and we play our football, we'll win this match. But I think we we played the game Charlton wanted us to play. Yeah. And we got dragged into their game and their style. And that was a bit disappointing uh, to watch, to be honest. But, you know, not going to lose our heads over it. We lost. It's a game of football, Dad. You famously said on this podcast, we are going to drop points. We are going to lose games. Mm. And this is just a blip in the road on, a, on, on a, I'm sure, a long and successful season. Yeah, and I think the uh, point you made, I think we have to emphasise that, you know, we can't really take anything away from Charlton. They they played their game plan down to the T. Uh, and they played um, probably as good as they would have played this season. And we definitely played the worst we've played this season. You put those two combined, the ultimate outcome is what actually happened. Um, I, I did say that, you know, and I still think we'll drop points. You know, I know that um, a lot of people were talking after the, the last win. Uh, can we go for the season completely unbeaten? I'll make a prediction here. I think we're probably going to lose at least seven or eight games in this division this season. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think five. Yeah, well, it, it could, whatever number, it's not just going yeah, to be one. of course uh, it won't and be. I, and I think we just have to realise that. This is a tough league. What we've seen, Matt, with Charlton and with every other team is they've raised their game against us. Yeah. And unless we're right on it, which we weren't yesterday... At the valley, this is what happens, and what what I find it, you know, equally um, not strange, but when you look at other teams in future games after they've played us, they look nothing like the team that played us. I know. They seem to up their game, but we've got to be prepared for that. Um, you know, and fair play to Charlton, you know, th- you know, and this wasn't a lucky one nil win. No. They deserve to win this. They should have been three nil up at half time. Mm-hmm. That's how different they were in terms of the guys' chances they created. And actually, the mistakes that we made to create those chances yeah. was the frustrating part. Yeah. Um, but it were it were a fluke win they, they deserve to win and uh, get the three points we need to learn from this yeah and I think for the first time this season dad you know we've been making comments like if we go 1-0 down or 2-0 down we always feel like we're going to be back into the game yeah. I felt like we could still be playing football right now we wouldn't have scored it, it felt like it yep. felt like one of those games didn't it where we just weren't ever going to break through or find the back of the net we yeah. weren't creative enough yeah, we yeah. weren't aggressive enough and I think that's a really important point for me in this game is we, we didn't have enough bite that we have been showing there was something missing and it it was an off game. That's all. It was just an off game. Yeah, bad you know, day at the office. Bad day at the office. You yep. know, I think there was a bit of fatigue in there, especially in the second half. You know, Iowata and Paik, they have been outstanding all season. And again, I'm not going to say let's... So, so, again, some of the stuff I've been seeing has been absolutely crazy, but they just had bad games, off games. The fitness yeah. wasn't there. There wasn't a click. We weren't creative enough. You know, Willemson this season has been absolutely outstanding. He wasn't quite creating the chances. No. Stansfield was kind of marked in out the game a little bit. You know, just big players for us didn't perform in that game. Just a bad day at the office. And, it was, uh, and yeah. you know, Charlton pressed as well. I think that's the first time, Dad, or, uh, this season we've been pressed for effectively the full 90 minutes. They kept their fitness levels just as good as we did. And it showed, didn't it? We kind of ran out of, pro- we kind of ran yeah. into a few problems, a few unforced errors. 
you know, they missed an open goal in the first half. I mean, we can go through the, the game in a little bit we'll, more detail. We'll do that in a sec, because I was um, talking about the goal we conceded was very poor as well, wasn't it? Incredib- but, 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 incredibly but, poor. But you, but you are right in terms of the way that they pressed us. But uh, I, I, you know, think and I expected, I was surprised to see the starting lineup was identical to the starting lineup as the previous game um, against Huddersfield. Yeah. And the subs were the same as well, because I thought, you know, it might freshen things up a little bit to avoid this type of fatigue. Why not use a squad? We've got a good squad. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, we trust Chris Davies. If he felt that those were the right players, then that's good enough for me. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I didn't. it wasn't helped as well uh, by... Um, and, and Nathan Jones made reference to this, and so did Matty Godden, who scored their goal. The statement from Christian Bielek uh, that he made a few days earlier, I think it was on BBC Radio. Did they reference that, did they? I missed that. Yes, they did, yeah. Did um, well, um, uh, Nathan Jones referenced it, said it was a naive statement to make. Uh, he, he made a statement about, you know, he says, uh, if I'm, uh, if I, I, he said, oh, this is Nathan Jones saying this, if I claim I'm the most good looking man in the southeast of London uh, a few days before a beauty con- contest, he said, I ain't going to do that. Like, <laughs> uh, and then Matty Godden said that, uh, you know, that, that comment was all over their dressing room. What motivation did it? It was a silly thing to say. And I'm sure Christian will be disappointed with that when he looks back in hindsight. Because you, you don't need anything to motivate teams to play against us because they, they'll want to beat us anyway. I do agree with what Nathan Jones said. I think it was a naive statement for Christian Bielet to make. I think, you know, with hindsight, I think he would regret it. And I think, you know, sometimes we all say things on the spur of the moment. But the problem as a professional footballer on a, on a national radio stage, is you're not going to get away with it. It's, yeah, gonna, yeah. it's been all through social media, uh, etc. I also think the mindset of the players as well, you know, it, it, they, they, you know we did, they wouldn't outrageously bad but like you said they weren't at the levels that they normally yeah. achieve the tempo was low you know we didn't have Lackluster. that fast zip and that really made a difference to us and of course Charlton were, were closing us down as well and also I think you know in terms of the word naive as a fan as well I started to believe that we were you know I went to that game thinking we would win it and uh, I'm sure most Blues fans felt on the back of what we did before that we'd win it but I think we have to have in the back of our minds that um, that this is going to happen you know we are going to lose games and also as well the the HS HMS P the League group, you know, being completely torpedoed this week, you know, and I know a lot of Blues fans do that and wind people up to get a bit of a bite on uh, social media and that. But I think this is very much a reality check for us that yeah. that, that that this is going to happen, that teams are going to come at us, they're going to want to beat us. And as I say, I don't think this is the last time this will happen, but I think we've got the quality to win a lot of games. But I, I think this won't be the last time we'll be having this conversation during the course of this season because it's a long season. We've got yeah. a lot of teams to play. Yeah. And, the you know, Dad, I've been picking up on one word to describe games and picking up on themes and stuff. And to me, the word that comes to mind is lacklustre. You know, it was just a lacklustre. I mean, it wasn't like a horrendous performance. We didn't, you know, make a, an embarrassment of ourselves. It wasn't to that level. It was just lacking in intensity lacking in creativity that's all it was you know it was almost like there was a bit of fatigue in the legs maybe yeah. or a little bit um, you know just a little bit yeah a little bit tired there maybe something in training maybe something in fitness I don't know but um, for me again this is just a small thing I agree with Chris Davis to start Iowata and Paik mm. because they have been outstanding yeah. however at half time it was clear to me I don't know what all the other Blues fans think that it, again the, that engine room wasn't quite yeah. the engine room of, of usual I would have loved to have seen Mark Leonard come on in the second half yeah. uh, because he's a proper footballer and I think he would have calmed it down a little bit again yeah. this is just a small thing I, I trust Chris Davis I'm not saying he made you know, any massive errors here but um, I would just have liked to have seen Mark Leonard just I mean, to freshen it up a little just bit just to freshen it up yeah, yeah because Again, we said Iwata and Paik, no doubt about it. If they're fit and ready, they should start. But to me, around that 45, 50, 55 minute mark, it was pretty clear that it wasn't working on that game day. And the midfield, with the way we play, is so important. Arguably, just a small thing, I would have liked to have seen Mark Leonard come on. Yeah, and I think that's a good point as well, because Charlton play a very compact midfield as well. So they, they play, fair, you know, essentially, there are five five in the midfield for Charlton. Mm-hmm. They do they do use wing backs and uh, to, to make that into a three. But when they're um, when we've got the ball, they make it into a five, and they're very mm-hmm. hard to, to break. Break down. So in order to break that, you've really got to be fast with the tempo. And I don't think it was there for Paik and Iwata in this particular game. And Mark Leonard could have made uh, a difference. What disappointed me as well, Matt, really, was we, we created virtually nothing. Didn't have one shot on target. And yeah. uh, when we did, on those few occasions, we got into good areas. We made bad decisions. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, and it was, you know, just one of them games. That's what I think you really described it very well at the beginning. You know, it's just a bad day. Bad day at the office. It's a bad day. And we've just got to move on. It's one game, you know, yeah. and it's a great it's a great start. But do you want to get into the, just the the mechanics of the game a little bit? Just yes, to do. Go, yeah, to, yeah. to go through it. So, yep, um, it. you know, as I say, you know, we, we I made the same point as you. And obviously, I hadn't, I hadn't realised what you were about to say. But I've put that we tended to adapt to their game yeah. rather than play our own game. 
and then try and force our way through, which was that's never a good sign mm-hmm. as well. Um, also, uh, in goal, he, he tends to um, play more long balls than Bailey Peacock throw, and I think that'll disappoint Chris Davis because Chris mm-hmm. Davis likes to build from the back, and that uh, played into Charlton's hands, I think. Yeah, because yeah. because that that's exactly what I was referencing, Dad, when I said that we adapted to Charlton's style that we that they didn't adapt to ours. Yeah, it was almost in reference to that long ball. When we lacked creativity or we lacked the ability to play it from the back, all just hoofed it, and it, yeah. and it just came straight back. Yeah, and, and, and it will do because I think that's that's the principle of what Chris Davis is trying to do. Yeah, it might be a bit risky at times to play at the back. But if you play from the back, you're keeping possession. As soon as it's hoofed up front, it's 50-50. Yeah. And you do it to a centre-half as well. And, you know, Seven times out of ten, the centre-half's going to win it because they're yeah. taller generally, aren't they? So and I felt that as well, um, you know, uh, also, um, you know, he, he had a pass, a stray back pass that came from Williamson, which Canoe intercepted, took it round also, and all he needed to do was just slide it into the goal. Literally, it was a goal. couple of yards outside the goal. How that went and no. didn't go in that should have been 1-0 and just before half time not long after that the same player uh, also I don't know what he was doing he, he he just basically passed it straight to him on the edge of the box mm-hmm. but thankfully he ran straight and smothered it didn't mm-hmm. he so he, yeah, he retrieved himself there a little bit but I say I do think that um, that the side of play playing from the back is going to be prone to these type of errors and yeah. we've just got to get better at it Dad as it's popped up naturally because we're talking about also and his performance I've got a quick question you know we're playing out from the back this season. That's yeah. our style. Chris Davies wants us to build from the back and he wants that to be our identity. We've seen uh, Bailey Peacock fouling goal now for seven games in the league and yeah. we've seen Allsop come in for the last two games. What are your thoughts on that in terms of comfortableness with the ball at their feet, playing out mm. from the back? Because to me against Charlton, again, there's no right or wrong here, Blues fans. I'm just making observations. Allsop seems to go the route one uh, uh, direction very quickly and I think that played into Charlton's uh, hands this weekend whereas Bailey Peacock Fowles seems a bit more comfortable with the ball at his feet doesn't he? Yeah. What do you think? Well you asked a question that I was going to ask at the end so we might as well address it now. Yeah. Um, a few weeks ago all of us were saying give Allsop a chance uh, particularly after the mistake that uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell made uh, against Peterborough and also some mistakes that happened prior to that in a few games mm-hmm. a little bit earlier so it was right I believe at that time it was right for Allsop to get his chance now we've seen him for two games um, and I think that based upon the two games, it appears that uh, Allsop is more having a tendency to want to knock a long ball, which I don't think Chris Davis would be happy with. Chris Davis likes to build from the back, and I think that's part of the problem against um, Charlton. We were losing the ball too easily because it was making it 50-50 when it was knocked forward, whereas, yeah, it is a risky um, thing to do playing at the back, but this is the outcome that you've got to try and build and find your players, and I think we are going to continue to make mistakes, but I think Bailey Peacock-Farrell is better at uh, ball to feet and build up play than what I've seen so far from from also he seems more comfortable to do that and I've got a feeling that Chris Davies will bring Bailey Peacock Farrell back yeah. for league games because I think his his distribution is better. Both goalkeepers have proved that from what we've seen that they they've made mistakes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, also made a couple of bad mistakes in the in the couple of games that we've seen him. Uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell uh, has made them, but I think that is ultimately going to continue to happen until we get better <laughs> at this. It, it seems like Bailey Peacock Farrell maybe holds onto the ball one second too long and also distribute it one second too early. There's like there's a little bit of an, a discrepancy. However, I think with Chris Davies at the wheel and with his style of football, I think Bailey Peacock Farrell suits his style yeah, and the I way did. and the way he wants to play. Just after the observation I've seen over the, uh, the last nine games and I think Chris Davies will accept the odd mistake like we did see against Peterborough and Leighton Orient to, yeah. to, to keep to the principles that he wants to play Yeah, I, I, I totally agree and you know, obviously the focus on uh, Bailey Peacock Farrell at the early part of the season in the first seven games was, was very intense because it was clear that it was making errors you know, in, in, in a number of games but now that we've seen Allsop, which is our uh, his, his competition and what happened against Charlton, I think that, you know, that we we didn't retain the ball well enough at the back because it was being becoming a 50-50 when mm-hmm. also... I mean, let's be fair to Allsop as well. He wasn't hooping it all the time. No, 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 he wasn't. We, we, he don't, wasn't. we don't want to give that impression. No, that, no, you no. Know, Just more, more prone to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, watching either of them at the back, I feel exactly the same so. about you know, about the way they're getting closed down. But this is what they practice in training. Yeah, so answer your question. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see what Blues fans think about this as well. Um, my gut feeling is that I think that Chris Davies will probably end up going back yeah. to Bailey Peacock Farrell for the league games. But also as well, I think that's a compliment to Charlton. I think the reason why Allsop mm-hmm had to go route one a little bit more than he would have liked to is because they pressed us really well. Yeah. So we didn't have the option to play out from the back as well. And 
you know, other teams are going to see that now against Birmingham City, aren't they? And the thing, yeah, I think the difference is the energy levels. Charlton are a very good team, in my opinion, at this level. I think Charlton will be in and around the playoffs for sure, if, especially if they can keep up that yeah. um, tempo of football. But other teams are going to look at that now and go, oh well, if we press Birmingham high and intensely, they're prone yeah. to making mistakes or going down Route One. So, but every team yeah. is, Matt. I mean, of course, because, they are, yeah. because I think even with the opposition that we've been playing, they all try to play the t- same type and style of football as us. So it's like a chess game, isn't it? You know, all, all teams do this and we do it to them so that when we've got the ball they press us and when they've got the ball we press them but what the good teams will do is they'll break that press yeah. and that's how you create chances isn't it? you break the line and you break the press and you get on the attack mm-hmm. and the better teams will be the ones that will be more successful so mm-hmm. I think every team is going to do that every team is going to press us so we need to get we need to get better at playing from the back but remember it's a new style we've only been playing it yeah. for uh, since Chris Davis um, became our manager yeah. so we'll, we will get better at it but it is going it is going to be edge of the seat top of and it is the amount of times that we play it from the back and I'm just sitting there oh my word this is so however that is modern football now and when you break that initial press I don't don't know what the percentages would be but we look like scoring every time we go forward when we break the press and we play through the press we look really good and we've scored a lot of our goals this season breaking through that initial press haven't we we've had a lot of success doing it so you know this is here to stay we might as well get comfortable with it I'm just going back to the original question, Dad. I think Bailey Peacock Farrell is arguably more suited to Chris Davis's vision and yeah. and the identity that we want to bring forward as Birmingham City. In my opinion, just thought I'd bring that up because I think I, know... I think I think I'm glad that Chris Davis gave Allsop the chance because yeah. I think a lot of Blues fans, a lot of Blues fans, were calling for him to be put in. Now, now that he has been put in and we've seen him for a couple of games, you know, there doesn't seem to be huge amounts of improvement compared to Bailey Peacock Farrell. So, uh, it, but it, it, you know, what? it's not a position I'd want to play. I, I, wouldn't, not, I wouldn't no. want to play goalkeeper. It's a thankless well. position. Um, should we go into the goal? Oh, my word. Oh, it's it, it was a terrible goal, wasn't it? I mean, literally, it was so poor. It might have been a Mark Roberts back in the day. Yeah, Re- but long, the, long throwing, you let it bounce. That's, the, that's it, right. Stop there. Let it bounce. Why yeah. didn't he? I, I think if Bielek was on the pitch, that wouldn't have bounced. Yeah. Somebody would have headed that across. But I think it just went over Taylor Garden Hickman's head bounced and Matty Garden turns I mean it was disappointing because even when he bounced we should have won that yeah, challenge exactly, yeah, yeah. it was such a bad and, goal and while, so two things for me one you know they're going to throw it long why I felt like we were too static in the box number one yeah. two the bounce you don't let it bounce ever that is basic Sunday league football if you want to break it down to yeah. that level you do not let it bounce in the box especially from a, a long throw it when, when, that, when that it went in I think it was around about the 56th 57th minute whenever yeah. it was I felt then, I thought, this ain't going to be our day. Because that was a really, really bad goal to concede. But, you know, you, you always felt that we had, if we upped our game, we always felt when it came towards the latter parts of the game, we'd impose ourselves. But We didn't know, did we? You, we did, well, do you, know really? what, do you know, part of that, Matt, was um, the fact that Charlton were using the dark arts again. No, no. Uh, wasting time, going down, faking injury. Um, and the referee, you know, there was one injury where there was one of their players was uh, went down in the, in our box, and there must have been at least five or six minutes mm-hmm. of injury time. But and then the referee adds on five minutes, and that's not in taking into account the goal um, yeah. celebration, the substitution. There should have been at least nine or ten minutes worth of. Um, yeah. Added on time, but but it was five minutes. But as you said, it didn't really matter because yeah. we could be playing now. We probably wouldn't have scored. In I agree. Game. I stand by that statement. That yeah. was a game of football. We just weren't yeah. going to score in. And um, what was bitterly disappointing about that is, Dad, and say what you want about Nathan Jones, Cholton deserved that win. Let's just put that out there before I say this point. Really disappointing to see him saying to his players, "Stay down, stay yeah. down." So you know he was clearly on the side of cheating, burning the clock down, whichever dark Every art. Team does it though, know. I know. I get it. No, I get yeah. it. I get it. And you know. If um, if that was Blues won the up you know against a big team, I'd be doing the same. I'd be going to stay down all those things. But uh, you know to see the manager do it because the manager leads by example, doesn't he? That was disappointing in my opinion. But you know, um, as I say, I think we could be still in the Valley now, Dad, and we still wouldn't score in that game. I, I, I think you're right. And um, you know, Alfie Mavis subbed at half time as well. He was he was ineffective to be honest. Uh, you did his usual buzzing around. Um, Stansfield didn't get really anything, did he? Nothing really no. to, to, to go but That at. was because Allsop was playing quite a few long high balls and the centre-half just mopped it up straight away. You know, he's not... Yeah. Stansfield isn't an aerial threat threat kind of striker. That, that, that's your Dykes. Mm. That's your Yuki if you want to play that style of football. So I felt a bit sorry for Stansfield in that context that he was fighting a losing battle. But, yeah, poor game from 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 majority of the team. Uh, but, uh, yeah, really disappointing goal to concede. Disappointing performance, but it's football. This happens. I'm not going to lose it over it. It it was a bad day at the office. We will re. These will happen from time to time this season. Uh, As a unit, as a team, we're together. 
I want to see more fight and battle moving forward. And I think we'll get that. I think we'll get a reaction. Chris Davis won't be happy with that performance. It was, it was, and, good, it was uh, good to see the Blues fans at the end. You know, the vast majority were there yeah. singing and clapping at the very end to, to the players. I think the players could see. You could, I was watching the players when they were watching us sing Keep Right On. And, you know, I think, that, I think they, 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 would have, they would be hurting there. And I think they 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 know that they owe us another performance now to get yeah. back to winning ways. But like you said, Matt, you know, there's no need to overreact. This yeah. is a first defeat in nine league games, having won seven on the bounce. You know, things are you know we're top of the league, yeah. and we just got to now. I think I think there's a lot that uh, Chris Davis and the players will learn from this game, and we've got to go in there. Uh, with the right attitude to make yeah. sure that we've got you've got you've got to win that psychological battle, then you've got to win the physical battle. And if you do that, then the natural skill of our players will win games if yeah. we can win those two first. Um one final thing as well for me as well, it looks like Bielek's gonna be injured as well. Yeah. Um but well, he, he was injured, he went off at half time. Yeah, and he should have uh, gone off earlier in my opinion. And Chris Davies said that it doesn't look good, but he's gonna get a report tomorrow, which was at the end of the game. So yeah. we could be looking at a couple of months on that one. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't want to speculate on that, yeah, I'm just saying yeah. reading between the lines. We'll wait and see what the physio says and comes out with, but he, he should he should have come off earlier because yeah. he went down um and he, he stayed down for a little while. Then he hobbled up, yeah. he looked like he'd hardly walk. And he carried on until half time, you know. And sometimes, you know, players need to be sensible to think, well, actually, if you stay, you're going to make your injuries worse. Uh, but we'll have to see what the outcome of that is. But uh, if we lose him, I, I know Dion Sanderson's not far away. Yeah. Um, you know, Ben Davis looked good again when he came on to me. So he's a solid unit. Yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, we, we've, we've got cover in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll have to see what happens with, uh, with Bielek. Yeah. A couple of things for me as well, Dad. You know, we're looking for a bit of a threat. We're looking for a bit of dynamic movement in the later part of the games. For me, I'd like to see Hansen starting on the left. We saw Keshi Anderson start this game. Um, I, I think Hansen gives us a little bit more flair. And I'd like to see Yakuyama on the bench maybe making an appearance because he's fast. He gives us a little bit of an outlet. And I get it. We can only name seven subs and we've got a big squad, quality players. And Scott Wright as well, uh, you know, he he is making difference when he comes on in game. So I'd like to see him arguably get a start as well. And this isn't me saying we lost a game. I'm pressing the panic button. We need to rotate the squad. I'm not saying that at at all. Keep it as it is effectively because we're we're still playing really good football. I'm making a point. If a player comes on like Scott Wright has been, Hanson has been. Uh, 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 previously as well give them a start let let yeah. them prove what they're worth in the team yeah, because... and, and they're good points you're making because yeah. you know we've got a squad why not use it and I, and I think that yeah. you know I mean Keshi Anderson was, was, was didn't do anything fundamentally bad but he wasn't that effective which yeah, is why he came, well, he came off at uh, half time didn't I, he? I, th I think he's had two ineffective halves now in the yeah, in the yeah. so so he, he might need to be like have somebody else picked yeah. in front of him now just to G up his game a little yeah, bit you definitely. know I think well actually you know I've got to up my game now because otherwise I've lost his place I think um, we'll see Yakiyama maybe starting on the bench against Shrewsbury That'd in the NFL nice. Trophy yeah um, yeah next week uh, but you know we've got a couple of weeks break now because the Cambridge game is um, is now postponed because of international uh, call-ups yep. um, so uh, we haven't got a game which is a Lincoln away is our next uh, league game uh, yep. in a couple of weeks so a couple of weeks for the uh, Chris Davis and the team to have a, analyse this game there's plenty to analyse yeah. yeah and then you know, and then uh, obviously make the improvements and let's get ready and start all over again. Uh, yeah. I'm sure we will all be up for it again. Um, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. 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 And, and one final thing for me, I guess a bit of a conclusive statement, Dad. It was a poor performance, very lacklustre. We lost our individual battles across the pitch. It was a bad day at the office. This is football. This is going to happen. Let's not lose it. We are a great team. I have no doubt we're still going to do very well and win this league. I still think we're going to win this league. Uh, but this will happen again. We will drop points. We will lose games. Mm. And every time this happens, other teams are going to laugh at us. Other, mm. other, other, other local fans are going to mm. jump on, oh, you think you're undefeated. Let them have. Let them bring the noise, whatever they want to bring on social media. We're Birmingham City. We are an amazing team this season and we will do just fine. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great way to finish yeah. the podcast, actually. You know, we're, let, let, let other fans say and do what they ever want and let our players do their talking on the pitch. But uh, it was a disappointing result. You know, our first um, taste of defeat. Uh, this season, in fact, the last defeat that we had in the league uh, was going back to the championship when we lost at home to Cardiff um, many, many months ago. Wow. So we're not used to it, are we, uh, Blues fans? But let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear uh, what you've got to say about the game. Um, you know, uh, any points that we've discussed. You know, please, uh, please comment below. Um, if you're a Charlton fan, yeah, please feel free to um, give your uh, thoughts below uh, in the uh, in the comments below the video. It's always nice to hear the opinions of, uh, of opposition fans as well. If you did like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't checked us out on our social media channels, pop along to our X page and our Instagram page. And also as well, if you like to listen or watch your podcast on Spotify, you can also do that now and you'll see the handles appearing for, on, for all of those channels uh, on the screen right now. 
And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, why not hit that red subscribe button and subscribe to the channel for all future content all about Birmingham City. And myself and Matt will see you on the next video.